station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I'm ready. KSAT TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. This is KSAT TV. Can you hear me? KSAT TV, can you hear me? I sure can. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you. Hello, Andrew. Hello. Hi, Andrew. This is Stephanie Cerna with KSAT TV from San Antonio. How are you? How are you? I'm doing great. Great to talk with you, Stephanie. We, uh, we hear you're uh, from San Antonio. We wanted to ask you what did you miss most about your time living in San Antonio? Well, I have uh, long ties to San Antonio. It actually started, my father was an Air Force officer and was at one point stationed at Lackland Air Force Base. And I went to elementary school for a couple of years there in San Antonio. And then in my own military career, I passed through Fort Sam Houston a number of times for professional military education. And now as a military physician, I actually maintain my uh, clinical uh, skills and privileges, uh, my credentials at Brook Army Medical Center, even though I uh, am, when I'm at on Earth, I do live in Houston, but uh, Fort Sam Houston and Brook Army Medical Center are my military home right now. Very cool. Uh, what, um, we have some uh, questions from some elementary school students, and they wanted to know, um, how did you become an astronaut? Well, that's great timing for that question because actually NASA is in the process right now of getting ready to select a new class. We only select a class about every four years, and the process is pretty simple. It starts with an online application on usajobs.gov. Uh, they put out an announcement that they're looking to hire a new class of astronauts, and that's exactly how it started with me. process is a little bit different for uh, people with military backgrounds like me, um, but Nevertheless, it all ends up with uh, the process going through NASA. It involves interviews and some aptitude testing. The whole process takes about a year long before we finally select a class. And this new class that we uh, just recently announced and are in the process of soliciting applications from will be selected to start in 2021. Uh, my class was selected about seven years ago in 2013. So, but for the basic requirements, study math, science, engineering, and love what you do. Good advice. <laughs> um, they want to know, how does it feel to be out in space? Well, it's a lot of fun. I would say the moment that I first experienced microgravity, I felt like I was hanging upside down because you're so used to gravity pulling you down all the time. When you all of a sudden don't have gravity pulling you down, you feel like you're floating like a balloon. But the reality is you're just kind of staying neutral. I can get here in the middle of the module like this and just float gently, very slowly. It's a lot of fun. I would say it feels fun. Well, that's good to know. Um, they want to, you know, speaking of that, uh, they want to know, does it get hot in your spacesuit? Well, controlling our body temperature in spacesuits is really important. The spacesuit that we wear when we go on spacewalks, we actually wear a pair of underwear on it that has tubing f with water flowing through it to ki help t uh, collect the heat off of our bodies and constantly keep us cool because it would be very easy to overheat without the ability to for, uh, for the heat to escape uh, from, your, from your body. So we do uh, take measures to make sure that we stay nice and cool inside our suits. And do you need? And then they want to. Do you need to wear that suit when you're in the spacecraft? So uh, we have a couple different types of two primary types of spacesuit. There's the type of uh, pressure suit that we wear uh, when we're in our capsule when we launch on the rocket, and that's just in case if something were to happen to the capsule that we would have an extra layer of protection. Um, this pressure suit would help 
uh, keep us safe inside the capsule. When we're inside the ISS like this, I can just wear normal clothes like this because the, the hull of, this, of the ISS actually keeps the pressure in and keeps our environment nice and comfortable for us. When we go outside for a spacewalk, that's a different type of spacesuit, and uh, that's the one where we wear that special underwear that I mentioned that has the cooling system in it and provides all everything we need. It's like our own little mini spaceship outside the ISS that we can move all over the outside of the of the space station. And they wanted to know um, what type of work do you do on the ISS? I would say broadly, our, the categories of our work up here is maintenance and science. Uh, just today, I was doing a number of scientific experiments, and the science covers all different fields, uh, chemistry, biology, medicine. Um, we do uh, t uh, technology demonstrations. We do earth science and earth observation. Um, we also um, do a lot of maintenance inside the space station. Uh, the, the ISS now has been in orbit continuously with humans living in it for the last 20 years. And so there are a lot of things that need to we need to repair. So we'll get behind one of these racks and we'll do repairs. And then things outside the space station break as well, and that requires us to do a spacewalk. And during the course of my time up here, we've done a number of spacewalks um, to re upgrade things on the outside or repair things outside. Uh, we did exchange some batteries um, that had been installed years ago and we needed to put a, f a fresh set in. And while you're out there, they wanted to know what is the view like from space? You know, what, what are the sun and the planets? What do they look like? Well, the thing that we have the best view of is the Earth. We have a big window that faces the Earth called the cupola that gives us a 360-degree look around, and we can see off uh, several thousand miles in each direction. Um, and it's, it's spectacular. It's absolutely beautiful. And we go around the Earth. We make 16 trips around the Earth uh, in a day, and so we see a sunrise or a sunset about every 45 minutes. We make a full trip around the Earth in an hour and a half. And so any given time we go out, uh, in the, uh, into the cupola to look at the Earth, I don't always know whether it's going to be night or day, um, and then if I just wait a couple minutes, it'll be the other. It's, it's a, really a lot of fun. Um, the big benefit that we have in looking at the stars and the planets and the sun is that we are above the Earth's atmosphere, and so things look a lot crisper and a lot cleaner, although we're really relatively not that much closer to the planets and the, and the stars as you are on the surface of the Earth, but we just get a much clearer, much more beautiful view of it. That seems neat. Um, they wanted to know, what's the maximum amount of time that you can be out in space? Well, in terms of uh, living on board the International Space Station, we've had missions as long as uh, Scott Kelly's, which was a year, and Christina Cook, um, who was one of my crew crewmates that just departed a little over a month ago. She was up here for just short of a year. I'll be up here for nine months. So in terms of living and working in space, we've proven that you can live a long time. And we have a good understanding of, of how the, or we're starting to get a better understanding of how the human body uh, adapts to that. We exercise daily to keep our muscles and our bones healthy while we're up here. So we're figuring out how to live for a long time in space. In terms of doing spacewalks, how long do we, we are, a spacewalk outside in a spacesuit lasts somewhere around six or seven hours typically. But living on the space station, we've proven that we can do it for a very long time and we're getting very good at it. That's neat. Um, and then you, you ha you're working with astronauts from other countries. What's that like? Well, the international partnership is one of the best things about the International Space Station program. It is a partnership of 15 different nations, and uh, not every nation, of course, is represented up here at any given time, but right now we have two Americans and one Russian on board. We had an Italian astronaut during my time up here. Um, we also had the first astronaut from the United Arab Emirates up here while I, while I was up uh, during my time up here. So it's... you we. Uh, 
have control centers, uh, mission control centers all over the world. Uh, we live uh, and train overseas as in each of these places in Japan, in Russia, in Europe, in our lead up to our launch. Um, so the uh, the international cooperation is just was one of the, the most incredible things about this program and it will be one of the enduring legacies of the ISS program is learning how to live and work together with other nations in space as part of this, this uh, terrific um, international partnership. And while you're up there, they wanted to know, do you have a freezer? Well, we do. We have a couple of different types. We have freezers for freezing science samples, and we have them scattered out in a, in a number of different modules to include right here. There's a, I have a, there's a freezer right here. And then in this module behind me um, called Node 1, where our galley is, where our kitchen is, we also have refrigerated space that we can put our own food in, and we also have a food warmer to warm up our food. So the space station's filled with freezers and refrigerators and... Um, um, incubators and all kinds of fun devices for science, but also for the comfort of the astronauts living on board. That's very neat. They're curious about that. And, um, you know, Andrew, on a more serious note, we were just wondering, do you have any concerns back home due to the coronavirus? Well, certainly with my own family, I'm in touch with them uh, every day, and I uh, know all the, the measures that have been uh, taken to help prevent the spread of it, and I, you know, I, I don't have concerns. I know my family is safe. But uh, in terms of NASA and our support on the ground, um, NASA and our partner agencies, the uh, partner space agencies are no strangers to working during times of adversity. Uh, just as recently as a couple years ago, when Houston was basically shut down by Hurricane Harvey, Mission Control Houston uh, endured right through it, uh, rose to the occasion because the ISS and uh, all of its systems, uh, you know, the, we, are, we are continuing. Operations up here are, are going to continue regardless of what's happening on the ground, and the, the resolve of the controllers uh, on the ground have persevered, and I know that they'll continue to do that. The little the difference this time is that there is some impact to all the control centers all over the world, but uh, we're sh showing right now that they show the same resolve to make sure that the ISS remains safe. And so we have full confidence in th those that support us on the ground. And um, they were wondering about your view for this uh, regarding the coronavirus as well. Many industrial areas in China had shut down. They were wondering if there were any visible changes uh, in pollution from that region that, that you could see in space or not. In terms of recent events, I can't say that I've noticed any uh, changes that, I, that I'm able to see with my own eyes, but I mean, I can tell you that there are definitely um, things that we observe all the time, uh, any given time from the ISS, uh, indications of, of our impact on the Earth. We certainly can see evidence of urbanization both during day and night. Um, we can see fo uh, smog and dust in the atmosphere. Uh, we can see evidence of glacial retreat. Uh, we can see see evidence uh, of uh, runoff and sediment uh, in the outflow of rivers and streams. Um, so we, absolutely, we can see evidence of, of our impact on the planet, but in terms of recent events, nothing that, uh, uh, that I've been able to see. Well, thank you, Andrew. You said you were there for, you're going to be there for nine months. What month are you on? Uh, I'm just uh, finishing eight months. I'll return to Earth in a little, uh, in about a month, about a month from today. All right, Andrew, I'm sure your family looks forward to seeing you. Thank you for talking to us today. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, I'd just like to say hello to the entire San Antonio, to the, the Al to the Alamo City, the military city, and the military community. This is Houston ACR. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans living and working on the International Space Station. Thank you. Thank you to all the participants from KSAT TV. We are now resuming normal operational audio communications. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you.